Welcome to Gartner's 2024 Infrastructure Operations and Cloud Strategies Conference. It's great to be here. Coming in this morning, I saw a lot of smiles, which is always wonderful. It also lines up with what we're hearing from tech leaders, including heads of infrastructure and IT operations, or INO. You are optimistic about the future. You've gotten stronger from dealing with the challenges of the past five years. The value you bring has never been clearer. That optimism, though, is tempered a bit by the stress at the pace of change. And it's no wonder. Think about all the new tools and breakthrough capabilities announced in 2024, especially around AI and generative AI. There's more choices on what to buy or build than ever. We're still expected to keep driving down costs. Plus, our CIO and senior leaders need us to keep up. Thus, feeling some stress is understandable, and it's manageable. So how do we manage that stress effectively? Well, psychologists tell us that stress triggers a few innate responses. They're the well-known fight or flight responses. And I know stress might prompt us to aggressively pursue a transformation effort or retreat from the cloud and the edge back to the data center. Or we might freeze, maintaining current operations, not pursuing anything new until we're told to do so. Or we could fawn over a framework, vendor, or technology that promises to solve all of our problems. So which response should we adopt? Frankly, none of them. We can't just blindly charge forward or escape into the past, but we can't stand still either. Our executives need us to take initiative. We certainly can't expect some magical framework or vendor to save us. So what should we do? Well, clearly, we need more options. Good news, there is one. Better news, you've already chosen it by coming to this conference, because the best response to stress is to lower it. This keynote will give you the insights that you need to regain calm, reclaim awareness, even relax and have a bit of fun. That way we can bring all of our faculties to bear on this AI augmented future that is arriving as we speak. First, Autumn Stanish will share Gardner's vision for INO in 2025. Then Hassan Anasari will guide us on how to achieve that vision by strengthening INO for its AI augmented future. I'll then come back to share strategies on enabling executives to take full advantage of what INO can do. Because with these insights, you will be ready to take calm and deliberate steps to meet all the challenges of 2025. So let's jump right into that 2025 vision by welcoming up Autumn Stanish. Thank you, Roger. So anyone who knows me knows that I love a good book. Actually, here is my home library. And on my shelves, what you're gonna see is a lot of different science fiction. So think Asimov, Wells, Bradbury. And what's amazing to me is that now with technologies like generative AI, we're at the intersection of imagination and reality. In so many ways, our everyday life is kind of like the science fiction that we used to read about. And you know how we got here? It was through the relentless and iterative pursuit of progress from IT leaders such as all of you in this room today. Because that is the power of bringing vision and discipline together. And so Roger and Hassan, they're gonna share with you more about practical things that you can do today so that you're prepared for the future of tomorrow. But I wanna start us off by creating a vision for our 2025 future. Now there are two key themes that we expect will shape your strategies over the next year generative AI, and the digital employee experience. So let's begin with generative AI. Now, I know organizations all across the world are investing in and evaluating generative AI. And most leaders have told us that they're feeling really optimistic about the value that it can offer them. In the next year, they plan to deploy Gen AI that is multimodal and generates high quality content. At the same time, it has to be personalized and accessible for employees while you know, not in, um, harming privacy or security concerns. And so making all of this stuff happen means that beneath the optimism, 
there's also a sense of overwhelm and struggle. So today, I wanna to help you overcome this anxiety by making your next steps simple. So there are two forms of generative AI use cases that we're going to adopt. There is everyday and game changing. And now to clarify, everyday gen AI is what we use every day to make us faster and more productive. Game changing fundamentally changes how we operate by providing us with brand new capabilities. And already, we're seeing a great deal of value from practical, everyday Gen AI use cases. Some examples include the use of virtual support agents to deliver contextual knowledge, or maybe even offer data analysis, and the creation of content, such as infrastructure as code templates, scripts, and workflows. And so far, we've seen some impressive results. Within INO, 70% of Gen AI investments so far have exceeded or greatly exceeded leadership expectations for productivity. And IT leaders have shared with us that they're seeing productivity gains over 10% through these investments. And now to put that in perspective, that is at least 48 minutes that employees are getting back for their work every single day. So I know what you're thinking. What's the catch? Well, many leaders are thinking, deploy now and figure it out later. And this stems from a belief that we just need to embrace Gen AI as quickly as possible or else we're going to fall behind. But what we've found is that that is just the quickest way to waste a whole lot of time. So to really develop a vision for what is possible with generative AI and achieve even greater outcomes, what we need to do is see the bigger picture. So here is Gartner's brand new AI roadmap. And now I'm not gonna dive into all these little details today and I know you're gonna to wanna to hear more about them. So just take a picture for now and we can kind of refer back to it later. But I share this just to illustrate the range of AI activities that we need to put in place for effective implementation, as well as all the little things that can trip us up if we aren't strategic with our approach. And now this includes both technical and cultural details. And that's because for everyday Gen AI, one of the biggest value inhibitors that we have seen is simply out of sight, out of mind behaviors from our staff. Actually, here's what one of our clients shared with us about their investment in and their adoption of everyday Gen AI. That peak, it's the one training that they had hosted. And now this is because they deployed Gen AI as an optional solution to turn to for help. But if we really wanna be successful, we need to create a more integrated AI-human relationship. So here's a great example of this from Ericsson. They wanted their AI assistants to be more assertive. So they took a look at the employee workflow and they outlined predefined points in the process in which the AI would be triggered to offer its services. So for developers, they called this a coding buddy. And their little coding buddy would jump in at these various points to review, make suggestions, correct mistakes. And as a result, their developers were able to complete coding exercises 56% faster than they had before. And this was a capability that they had had all along. They just needed to make it more accessible to employees. And in doing so, they accelerated the learning, adoption, and value generation associated with their generative AI products. And this is just one example of all the potential that's in front of us right now if we are more intentional about our approach. But everything I've talked about so far, this is value that's just coming from everyday Gen AI. But you've all told us that one of your greatest anxieties is balancing the speed of innovation with the need to scale. Really, leading up to this keynote, we had searched and searched for game-changing stories within infrastructure and operations teams. And you wanna know what we found? Nothing. So please, let me ease your minds. You have not fallen behind. Not yet. Because our first priority is to effectively deliver technology for the business. And right now, that value is really only coming from everyday Gen AI use cases. And I'm not saying ignore game-changing potential. I'm just saying don't get lost in it too soon. Because in the meantime, we need to support Gen AI across the organization with AI-ready infrastructure. And that's because we're the foundation for their initiatives, spanning from every day to game-changing. 
And despite how it may feel sometimes, this isn't necessarily going to be a sprint to some ambiguous end. Actually, this is what we told your CIOs in our IT symposium events this year. Pace yourself in the AI races. So this means you must be prepared to match the CIO's set pace. And this will require greater alignment in partnership with your executives to make sure that you are delivering on the investments that they need to be successful. Now the next three days are going to be filled with sessions on exactly how to do this from a technical standpoint. And we'll go over some of those AI roadmap components that you'll need to address. But many of the challenges that we think that you're going to face are not gonna revolve around you know, how many GPUs you need or dealing with the hyperscalers. Actually, we predict that by 2026, 90% of you will suffer from more than 10 production impacting events every single year, simply due to insufficient Gen AI skills investments. And that's because the Gen AI capabilities that we develop are only as effective as the workforce skills that we have to use them. Consequently, we've seen the rapid adoption of a digital employee experience, or DEX, strategy. And now, if you're unfamiliar, DEX is a strategy that focuses on the overall experience that employees have with company-provided technology. So bad DEX is when, let's say, a random update pops up in the middle of your big presentation. Yeah, that's bad DEX. But good DEX is when everything, devices, applications, experiences, they're all working so well that employees forget that we're even here. And now in 2022, we created our first ever digital workplace maturity assessment, and it assesses maturity at five levels. Levels one and two are the infrastructure modernization stage. This is where you're just kind of putting out fires and keeping the lights on. And what we've seen is that that's about 85% of you today. Levels three and four are when you're enabling employees with new technology and empowering them with new ways of working. That's where 15% of you are and where most of you want to be. And then finally, at level five, we are partnering with the business to support transformation efforts through employee technology. And nobody has been found here yet. And over the past two years, we've conducted over 900 maturity assessments with our clients. And what we found is that only 1% have scored at level four. But this top 1% has been so effective at delivering their employee technology strategy that 62% of these top performers have been given a seat at the table with the CIO as a strategic partner. So if this is the future that you want, there are two best-in-class principles that we've observed that you should adopt. First, empower digitally dexterous employees and center outcomes on the employee experience. Now, I think we'd all agree that having a strong workforce with the ability to use technology Pretty fundamental to our success. And yet today, only 37% of workers say that their digital skills are being tapped into. And that's down from 52% just two years ago. And this drop is because we have a trust gap with our employees. If we want employees to augment themselves with generative AI, we need to show them how. Because this technology, it demands a new approach, one that requires adjustments to behaviors that have been learned over time. It's kind of like asking employees to start writing with their non-dominant hand and expecting perfect penmanship right away. Really what they need to know is that IT has established guardrails to keep them from making mistakes and equipped them with the skills and the autonomy that they need to explore new use cases themselves. That's because you're the connective thread between employees and their work. Therefore, the employee must be at the center of decisions in terms of what you provide and how you enable them. So let me give you an example of this in action. TransUnion realized that to empower their, their employees and reach these higher levels of maturity, they would need to have more autonomy and ownership over their technology experience. And so to, to identify where they needed to improve, they started by asking employees two simple questions. How digitally connected do you feel? And how empowered are you in solving your own problems? And with these answers, they categorized their employees into four personas that they then mapped to specific strategies for enablement. So for example, employees who didn't feel empowered to solve their own problems, nor connected with the right technology, they needed more consistent experiences from IT. 
Many also suffered from digital friction, where processes or technologies actually hindered their experiences in productivity. And for some others, they just needed more choice and personalization, such as choice over configuration or form factor decisions. But for employees who are both connected and empowered, they helped with piloting new technologies and led the way as champions of new ways of working. And helping employees become these connected and empowered DEX personas, it's critical not just for achieving greater employee satisfaction, but also for gaining better performance with technologies like generative AI. As an example, Vizient used a similar persona approach to create a Gen AI community of practice. And this community connects these digital champions with AI experts to experiment with Gen AI. And one of the most important roles in this community of practice was a DEX stakeholder. In their case, it was a DEX researcher who would continuously monitor the shifting relationship between employees and machines. And TransUnion and Vizient have both shared with us that when their employees could see themselves in these personas and lead the technology strategy from the ground up, they saw better employee engagement, improved satisfaction, and better retention. And in the words of Chuck DeVries, the SVP of Vizient, our human-centric approach is unlocking new use cases with high adoption. It's building employee trust in Gen AI. So with that, we've covered a lot so far. So let's summarize our vision for your 2025 future. Generative AI will be an everyday productivity enhancer. So adopt new use cases for it to synthesize data and deliver information so you can capitalize on its value. And then, transform your end user services teams into human-centric DEX leaders by orienting metrics on human enablement and experiences. And now that you know where you're going, you'll need to be in ready shape to deliver on these goals. Hassan? Thanks, Autumn, for sharing the vision of where Thanks, Adam, for sharing the vision of where we're headed in 2025. But let's be honest, it's not just gonna happen automatically. Yes, the future holds immense opportunities, but also significant challenges. We are facing a massive talent and skills gaps. There are many data, security, and compliance challenges. Do you think your cloud bills are high now? Just wait until you add AI. Gardner estimates that Gen AI costs can be five to 10 times higher than you expect. Let's face it, just like we have seen with cloud adoption, your organization is likely pushing ahead with AI no matter what. That all sounds overwhelming, right? Well, here's the good news. We are here today to equip you for the AI augmented future. The best leaders aren't just keeping up, they are setting the pace. What sets these leaders apart is their ability to adapt. They took lessons from cloud adoption and applied them directly to AI. They invested in adaptive agility, adaptive delivery, and adaptive resourcing.